Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. Dipesh Pun, the son of former vice president, arrested over the al allegations of involvement in cooperative fraud, sent into judicial custody after failing to produce bail amount. Teachers at community schools continue with their affiliation with political parties, neglecting academic activities. 70,000 teachers found to be political cadres. Indians vote in the world's largest election as Prime Minister Narendra Modi seeks a historic third term on the back of issues such as growth, welfare and Hindu nationalism. Nepal's journey at the ACC Men's Premier Cup ends from semi-final with a six-wicket defeat against the UAE that will face Oman in the final on Sunday. The District Court Rupandehi had earlier in the day granted bail to six individuals including Dipesh Kumar Pun, the son of former Vice President Nanda Bahadur Pun, who was in police custody over alleged involvement in cooperatives fraud case. The court had sent one in judicial custody. Pun was to be released from custody against a bail amount of 400,000 rupees which he could not present and as a result he has been remanded into custody. Following detention hearing today, Judge Deepak Upriti ordered to send Om Prakash Gurung, chairperson of Supreme Cooperatives, to custody. Judge Upriti allowed the release of Durga Chapagai against 1.8 million rupees bail, Nabin Achami against 1 million, which he was not able to pay, Deepak Nepani against 445,000 rupees, and Nita Thapa Magar and Roshani Gurung against 200,000 rupees each. The case was filed at the district court against 28 individuals, including Gitendra Bahadur Rai. Gitendra Baburai, in fact, GB Rai, for allegedly mishandling cooperatives money. Seven were present at today's detention hearing, and officials have said Kumar Ramtel and Bhavishwar Aryal will be brought for statements from Kaski Jail. So far, 1,831 depositors have filed complaints regarding the financial mishandling based on which the alleged individuals have mishandled around 861 million rupees. However, government has, after investigation, concluded that 1 billion 20 million rupees have been mishandled by the cooperatives. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before today's question, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we asked you why are questions raised against province governors who hold constitutional responsibilities. 24% voted for option A, not understanding the prestige of the position, 58% for B, consequence of politicization, and 18% for C, result of unstable politics. Here's today's question, who should compensate the victims of cooperatives? Your options are A, operators of the cooperatives, B, government, and C, depends on the court's verdict. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Now, there are around 250,000 teachers for classes between child development level to grade 12 at community schools who receive their remuneration from the state coffers. Of them, around 200,000 are affiliated to umbrella organizations close to political parties. Around 70,000 teachers are members of political parties itself. The government has warned of taking actions against those receiving remunerations from the state coffers and involved in politics at the same time. Education Minister Shrestha sought for support after holding discussions with the Election Commission to separate teachers from politics. Prior to this, the Election Commission had corresponded with the Ministry of Education after receiving complaints of teachers becoming representatives of general conventions of parties, after which around 1,000 teachers had resigned. Acts related to political parties has prohibited teachers and government officials from becoming members of political parties. Education Act and regulations also prohibit teachers of community schools holding executive positions of political parties but have not barred them from being members of parties. Abusing this legal dilemma, teachers have been receiving membership of political parties. Nepali Congress has a provision of seven representatives at General Convention from the Teachers Association. Representatives of umbrella organizations of teachers have termed identifying teachers being members of political parties as the reason for the drop in standards of education, a wrong logic. Bill related to school education prepared by the government prohibits teachers receiving remunerations from the state coffers from being members of political parties. This bill is still under consideration. Education experts have said that endorsement of the bill in its current form would help curb political interventions at schools. 
The government has been investing more than 150 billion rupees in education each year. However, expected returns on investments have not been achieved. It remains to be seen if Minister for Education Sumana Stress's effort to ensure the education sector free from politics becomes successful. In our Public Voice segment today, we've asked what do they think about political parties with less public support leading the government. Let's take a look at what they had to say. जनता <laughs> कुर्सीमा बस्ने दुईटै पार्टी बीचको स्वार्थ पूरा गर्नका लागि चाहिँ तेस्रो दलले चाहिँ फाइदा लिएको जस्तो लाग्छ Sixty percent voting took place in the elections held today for 18th Lok Sabha in India, where 543 seats are being contested for. In the first phase today, voting was done for 102 seats. Indian media reported that the highest turnout was in West Bengal at 78 percent and Tripura at 76, while the lowest turnout was in Bihar at 46 percent. Voting will continue till 1st of June and counting of votes will be done on 4th of June. Sports News. Nepal's dreams of qualifying to the T20 Asia Cup ended with a SAR six wicket defeat against United Arab Emirates. In the match played at Al Emirat Cricket Ground, Ministry Turf 1, Nepal were put to bat, where they had a disastrous start and kept losing wickets at regular intervals before being restricted to 19 runs for the loss of nine wickets in 20 overs. Sandeep Jora top scored for Nepal with 50 runs. Gulshan Jha added 20 and Karan Kesi hit 17 while none of the other batters scored in double digit. Basil Hamid, Junaid Siddiqui and Ali Nasir picked two wickets each for the UAE where, while Omid Shafi Rahman, Ayan Afzal Khan and Muhammad Farooq shared a wicket apiece. In reply, the UAE chased the target with 16 balls to spare. Alishan Saraf, who remained unbeaten at 55, Vishnu Sukumaran contributed 28 and Saeed Haider scored 14. Gulshan picked two wickets for Nepal, while Som Palkami and Lalit Raz Banshi shared a wicket um, each. With the win, the UAE have off. moved we'll to the ACC Men's now. Premier Cup final, where they will play Reason. against Oman, who earlier defeated Hong Kong by five wickets. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.